The Battle of Rathenau was the first engagement between the forces of Brandenburg, Prussia and Sweden in the Swedish-Brandenburg War. The battle took place on 25 OS 1675, 6 and ended with the capture of the town of Rathenau, the front of which had been occupied by Sweden, by the Brandenburg troops. The Swedes, led by Colonel Wang Jilin, had about 500 men, the Brandenburg force. Commanded by Field Marshal Georg von Derflinger and General von Goetzer had some 1,500 minus 2,000 men in the battle. Background. In 1674, Brandenburg entered the Franco-Dutch War against France and dispatched an army to Alsace. As a result, France persuaded Sweden to attack the undefended electorate of Brandenburg. In late 1674, Swedish troops advanced from Swedish Pomerania well into the electorate, thanks to the absence of any significant contingents of Brandenburg troops. Meanwhile, the main Brandenburg army was fighting the French in Bavaria. So the Swedes, who had entered the war, surprisingly, on the French side and were under the command of Field Marshal Wrangel, were able to penetrate far into the state and occupy the city of Brandenburg without meeting any real resistance. The town of Rathenau was also occupied by Swedish troops because Wrangel wanted to launch a crossing of the river Albert Havelberg from Rathenau and join forces with Hanoverian troops. His objective was the capture of the important Brandenburg fortress of Magdeburg. To that end the Swedish advance party under Colonel Wang Jilin occupied Rathenau, initially to secure the Havel crossings and then push forward to Magdeburg. On the other hand, the elector of Brandenburg, Frederick William, wanted to hold the advance of the Swedes, attack the rear of the Swedish troops, and unite with those units of his own forces manning the fortress of Magdeburg. Ambush of Rathenau on 15 June 1675 the town of Rathenau was located on the eastern bank of the River Havel, protected to the west by a wide area of marsh between the main branches of the Havel, and was also surrounded by a moat. Of its medieval fortifications, only elements had survived, but these still offered adequate protection against an army not set on a long siege, so the gates were fortified and equipped with drawbridges. The Brandenburg plan was to assault the town through its western gate, known as the Havel Gate. Their troops advanced under Field Marshal Georg von Derflinger just before two o'clock over the Havel Bridge. Derflinger, who had been in Swedish service for a long time during the Thirty Years' War, rode at the head of the army accompanied by only a few dragoons and persuaded the guard to lower the drawbridge by speaking to them in fluent Swedish, and asserting that he was a Swedish lieutenant of Bulow's regiment from the garrison at Brandenburg and was on the run from the Brandenburg troops. This enabled the dragoons to break into the town. According to other reports, the Brandenburg field marshal had even been ridden up to the gate alone, and only after it had been opened, did his dragoons rush to help in order to infiltrate into the town in a coup de main manner. Meanwhile, the elector had Major General von Goetzer and 600 musketeers advance along the mill embankment to the mill gate. Here fighting broke out, the Swedes proving able to hold their ground for the time being, aided by the town's fortifications. Another unit that attempted to enter the south side of the town from the Havel in boats was also initially repulsed. Not until the second attack did the Brandenburgers succeed in entering the town. The assault on the mill gate also prevailed and General von Goetzer succeeded in capturing it. After vigorous fighting, the Swedish garrison was defeated and their commander, Swedish Colonel Wang Jilin, surrendered. My dearest, this morning we have taken the base of Rathenau by storm. They did indeed defend valiantly and, as they were fighting at their best, Adjutant Konolsky entered by the side unobserved with 300 men. Wang Jilin and his comrades are taken prisoner, as well as their lieutenant colonel and major, two captains and some lieutenants, and about 100 men. They had 600 in all, the rest were all killed. We have lost the Honorable L.T. Carl, Uckerman and Anensen, together with 40 to 50 other ranks. 
It is the best operation in the world to capture such an important place in front of all the enemy armada. If God had wanted us to do more, had we had our infantry with us, we would have beaten the enemy soundly. In the end God wanted some to survive. Adieu, I can write no more. I die your faithful husband and your servant. Frederick L. Z. Hess, letter to his wife outcome and aftermath of the battle. The fight cost Sweden 390 dead and 270 prisoners. The Brandenburg troops lost only 50 killed and wounded. They also captured 500 to 600 horses from the Swedes. The Swedes, hitherto perceived as invincible, had suffered their first defeat. As a consequence of this setback, the Swedes had to abandon the plan to cross the Elbert Havelberg in the vicinity of Radenau, in order to attack the key Brandenburg fortress of Magdeburg. Instead, the Swedish army, which was completely unsighted as to the strength and dispositions of their opponents, were forced to pull back to the north as quickly as possible in order to secure the now threatened supply lines. Over the next few days, as a result of the pursuit launched by the Brandenburg army, this withdrawal became a thoroughly disorderly rout. That finally ended after three days on 28 June in the decisive defeat of the Swedes at the Battle of Fair Berlin.